Introducing our next guest, Alora Torquia, British stage and screen actress, 2021 BAFTA Breakthrough Brit. I was very good at school and I got good grades, so all the teachers were like, well, you should do science, you should do maths, you should do English, you should do this. But I always enjoyed performing. I had an accent and you know, I'd stand up every time the teacher came in, which meant that the whole class would end up bullying me because I was just a weirdo. For this world that is acting, right, you've got sort of like some who work once in a while, some who work consistently, others who don't, unfortunately. None of it's really to do with how good anybody is. It's just to do with luck, pick of the draw, time and place, I mean, all these other things. Yeah. We don't have a choice. We are just a product of what we are. You, know, you wake up and you do mindfulness every morning and then your whole your whole world is okay. It's like, well, is it? <laughs> Does it? Well, don't I, put this I, on Instagram, I, I'll I be cancelled. I always felt that like you, nobody's going to come on a lovely white horse and save me. The only person who can save me is me. And at the end of the day, you're on your own. I believe like you, you kind of have to do one thing or another. If you decide to do something, you've got to do it. You've got to be all in. You've got to be all in. You've got to be all in. I had to be the best quite a few years later. I've reframed that. No, no, I want to be the best at what it is that I do yeah. for myself when I'm 75. The reframing of the goal has changed how I feel about the stress that I put on myself to mm. do it. Like thinking about something like a marathon as opposed to the a sprint. sprint. Introducing our next guest, Alora Torquia, British stage and screen actress, graduated from RADA, selected as 2021 BAFTA Breakthrough Brit. And if that isn't a mouthful enough, she was also selected as 2021 Screen International Star of Tomorrow, no less. So you may have seen her in the very cool BBC drama, The Gold, or In the Earth, or Midsummer. Welcome, Alora. Hello. Uh, rising star. <laughs> so excited what, to what have an you intro. on. I know. I know. It's like a boxing intro. It's like, come on, let's get in there. Um, so, Laura, first of all, thank you for coming on uh, on the show. I just wanted to tell our listeners of how I reached out to Laura because oh, it's yeah, quite it's a funny brilliant. story, isn't it? Um, so there I was. I'm at home on the weekend, and my uh, aunt sends me a text going, I've just seen this really cool drama on BBC. There's a girl that looks like you a bit. I was like, really? So I found out who you were. And I was like, oh my God, she's so cool. I need to watch this drama. So I watched it literally back to back over one weekend. And then I was like, I need to text her or on, in, on Instagram. So I reached out and said, hi, Laura. Laura. I told you how I, how I kind of got um, intro to you. And you were so lovely in your message back. And then I was like, need to have you on the show no. and here you are and here I am I know this is proof that you know if you want something to happen just reach out and you can make it happen right I just thought yeah I mean I I don't know I mean I don't know how other people do it but I think your message was so lovely and warm and sort of from I felt like it felt from a good place and you know so yeah I mean 100% it's so weird because with social media sometimes it can feel like it's um it's this I don't know, gap between sort of like human relationships because it's obviously all technology based, but I don't really see it that way because you can make really incredible connections with people you don't know and they've got interesting stories. So I'm always up for like having a little look, questioning a little bit and then going, actually, I feel like this is a good vibe. I'm going to go with this and see where it goes. Absolutely. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much. So let's get stuck into it. So, Laura, I'd like to, I always like to find out a little bit about the kind of formative years of Alora, that young Alora running around. What was Alora's life like and how was it for you kind of growing up? Well, so formative years. Um, I didn't uh, grow up here, uh, sort of in the UK. Um, I grew up all over. My mum worked for the British Council and she was an English teacher and my dad uh, kind of had studied in, in food and had done his sort of work there but his ultimate desire was to sort of travel and obviously when they met um, that's a whole different story probably should be made into a movie at some point because it's a lovely story another podcast yeah though. another podcast um, when they met and they decided to have us I'm one of four uh, girls um, they also wanted to travel the world so my mum became the main breadwinner my dad sort of stay at home dad uh, and would start little businesses wherever we were. Um, so we moved around out. So first year was sort of like in Japan. Uh, we went oh, wow. to Sh Tunisia, Sri Lanka, uh, parts of Eastern Europe, Europe. Um, I mean, loads of places, um, Africa. And so, yeah. And then that was up until the age of about, 
I'd say 13, 14, 13, I think. Um, do, do you think kind of having, because there's such different cultures, each oh, yeah. of those countries are so different, um, Asia, then you've got North Africa. How Do you think that kind of played into you almost like now you're an actress, that, that you were having to take, you know, emerging yourself in a whole new culture. Do you think that kind of shaped maybe some of what you love doing now yeah. of getting into an acting role? Do you find that that's kind of helped you almost? It's really interesting. I, I, it's such a broad question to sort of like try and retrospectively think about why you are doing what you're doing now. Um, but I definitely think that that plays a part. Um, I think that what's so required for the sort of job I do is is, is an adaptability and a sort of even if you fear it or you feel uncomfortable with the ideas of not knowing what's going to happen next, not knowing where you're going next, not knowing sort of like the new family you're going to build or the stories you're going to make. In that sort of metaphorical sense, it's a kind of very similar to sort of yeah. what I had growing up. So I think you might be right. Um, there was a lot of change and there was a lot of uncertainty. So that kind of became my, I don't know, like that feels like home for me. Like most yeah. people I think search for security and I'm like, when it's too secure, I'm like, oh my God. You need to change it <laughs> change up. Change it up, change it up. <laughs> Give me something I don't know, you know? So probably, yeah. And so when you were 13, you came back to the UK. So we came to the UK, yeah. um, sort of, yeah, long story short, we, we were supposed to settle here. Things didn't quite go to plan. So our lives took a bit of a term, turn. We ended up homeless. My mum was heavily pregnant. Oh, wow. So we ended up kind of in the system of sort of homelessness, uh, which was as a kid, I suppose. You know, my parents did a great job of making that into sort of like a kind of almost fun experience. Um, but that was very eye-opening. And when we finally got settled, we sort of settled in sort of temporary accommodation and um, moved about. Uh, even more within London and parts of London and also the country. At one point, we were sent up to sort of Manchester only to figure out that the house had been given to somebody else. So we had to come back down. Um, and for a li large part of that, we were like still kind of homeschooled for a little bit because um, none of the schools mid-year were, were going to take me and my older sister for sure. Um, so, yeah, like we went, we went from this kind of free sort of just running about and, and, I don't know, warm weather, you know, to come into the UK and it was like cold and it was like, you know, everybody's stuck in two rooms, six of us. Uh, so yeah, culture shock, uh, economic shift yeah. shock, uh, lots of shocks, but um, still fascinating. And uh, yeah, I think we still had the same sort of enthusiasm of like going, okay, what's the story going to be? Um, and that sort of became apparent because we moved I was in one school and I got moved into another school and I think the school I ended up in was uh, a girls school yeah and I'd never been to a girls school so I was always I was like oh my god is this gonna be okay I don't know um and then that ended up being a really interesting experience because you know I remember my first day and everybody just looking so much older than me you know just really like you know women formed women and <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, you know, and talking about pop culture references and general knowledge stuff. And I'd come from learning about, you know, we were in India. So, I mean, it was sort of like the Raj and that was the history. You know, I was so behind in things like English literature and drama and like art. But I was quite advanced in maths and science. So the whole education system was different. Um, and there were pros and cons to that, that, you know, along the way I was like, you know, keeping some, letting go of others, learning mm. new things. Um, and sort of eventually got to the end of that <laughs> um, and had all these options for sort of what we want to do next, which looking back, I always think is sort of absurd to sort of go, oh, what do you want to do with your life? <laughs> Aged, I don't know, like 15 or something. Um, and those big questions were sort of there and I wasn't really sure. I, I, I was fortunate that I really loved to learn. So I was very good at school and I got good grades. So all the teachers were like, well, you should do science, you should do maths, you should do English, you should do this. Um, but I always enjoyed performing. And uh, my first performance I can remember was when I was probably about, I don't know, seven in Sri Lanka. I was playing Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. I wasn't even supposed to audition. It was for the older kids. And I just was just like, I'm going to audition anyway. <laughs> so, you know, I'm putting on little one person shows here and there constantly being in my own world, talking to myself like a little weirdo. 
Um, Do you think kind of the fact that you moved around quite a lot, obviously it's quite hard to find, to kind of create that foundation of friends and like, you know, that's my kind of like my little, my little group of friends that I've got and we've grown through school together. So every time having to kind of take yourself out and go, because it's almost like what you've described there, you know, going through things like, you know, homelessness is is a major thing to go through but how you've described it is almost like well that's what we went through and I it's not like you've kind of like um and that's just how the explanation feels like is that because you've always been able to take yourself out of something and just go into something that's completely different Mm. that your mindset is someone who actually doesn't perhaps get too caught up in why, why is this happening to me? Or, you know, were you kind of finding it a struggle or were you kind of somebody that kind of rolls with it and just... I think I, I no, I mean, I think that would be giving myself way too much yeah. credit, you know, just saying like I was totally yeah. cool. I mean, it's not that, I mean, even just the cultural differences made a big impact. You know, when I came here, I had an accent and, uh, you know, I'd stand up every time the teacher came in, which meant that the whole class would end up bullying me because I was just a weirdo, you know, yeah. like, what are you doing? So all those things, of course, you know, coming home, crying about it, being upset that I had no friends. I mean, all of that stuff happened. I suppose the matter of fact element in the way I talk about it is probably thanks to my parents because I think they just, uh, they were very keen on us discovering. I mean, I was having a sort of conversations aged eight with my dad around, you know, Nietzsche instead of learning how to do sort of, I don't know, maths, you know, when we were being homeschooled. So, I mean, it, it, it was a sort of philosophical understanding Simple things like, you know, shaving your legs. I didn't shave my legs till I was about 16 because my dad was like, no, I want you to be true to yourself. (laughs) You know, it's just like, oh, my God. And I'm just, everybody else is doing it. And, you know, these push and pulls of this sort of like, you know, innate family dynamic that was very much like just be whoever you want to be. Uh, And, you know, the push and pull from the outside world saying, you know, this is what you have to conform to. So, I mean, that was a struggle and that wasn't easy. But I think that, we would talk from a young age to always just look from a, look at it from a bigger perspective. Yeah. You know, this is a moment. Time is long. Uh, imagine what this might look like in a couple of years' time. What do you actually want in life? How important is this for you right now? And I think that that kind of skill of sort of that self-analysis mm. of critical thinking in those moments probably helped me build tools to be able to not sit here today and feel like, you know, I've had a, I've a hard like, life yeah. or, you know, hard done by. Like, you know, I, I, I think I everybody like has moments of, in life, I mean, you know, even generationally. I mean, when you think about the fact that you and I are sitting here in mm. comparison to sort of my, my parents or my, or my mother's side, South African Indian side, you know, what women were expected to do and what men were expected to do and culturally. And, you know, there are so many things in which... I feel like we're barely scratching the surface of those feelings. And, you know, that I I want to move on. I want to take what we learn and keep going. That's a big thing for me. I, yeah. And do you you think that, uh, when was that moment that you thought, you know, was it kind of a real soulful experience of going, hey, I really want to be an actress? Or was it something that just kind of, it, you know, you kind of found yourself going, oh, maybe I'll try acting. What what was the kind of feeling around? I think it was a combination of things. So I didn't know you could do it as a job. That was very evident. Yeah. Um, even though I watch loads of movies and, and things, I, I just didn't quite link those two dots together. There was a, a, a drama teacher at school who, who sort of really wanted me to give it all a go. And she told me about drama school and I didn't know what drama school was. And so I said, you know, I might give it a go. And then there was this other side to me that has always been you know highly competitive and so I immediately set myself like the the sort of the hardest school to get into and you know set myself that goal and was like well if that doesn't work out three times then I'll do English or you know so I think it was an amalgamation of the fact that I did meet people who were helping me learn that that was a possible Mm -hmm. path to take because had I not met them I would never have known maybe Um, but also an innate thing of just constantly performing I remember I went through a period of time 16 to 18 where I wanted to be a boxer so I was training very yeah, hard I've got that here yeah just oh no, no, sorry, sorry maybe just, it's a bit later no, no, down but but yeah just, just take me back to that so 
That was that the period before you went to to yeah yeah, yeah. so I was uh, at, it's a sixth form is that what we call yes. it yeah sort of like uh, and 16 you, and you got into boxing I got into boxing yeah this is so left field <laughs> so left field <laughs> like, how did that how did that happen and I think I watched a couple of movies. I think it was that, you know, I was obsessed with baby. Rocky. Was Rocky, <laughs> back in the day, it was Rocky. You know, sort of, oh. especially in places like India and stuff, you get like the pri- um, the pirate DVDs, yeah. you know, and yeah. there was this really grainy Rocky version yeah, that I just put on repeat. And I loved the music and oh. and just thought to myself, yeah, I want to be, I want to do that. Um, so I found myself this like dingy little gym and just started going to that like insanely. But there was loads of funding going on for young people. Yeah. So I had that support. So, but I was doing that and like getting really into it. And at the same time, I was getting involved with, you know, sort of youth company theatres, free acting mm-hmm. classes. And nobody really was taking me to any of this. It was more just me walking past and kind of going, oh, that looks like fun. Maybe I can go and practice my dance skills or my, my mm. whatever. And just curious about the world, I guess, which got me to do lots of things outside of the general uh, school day. Um, So I was, you know, I was running, I was doing like a track thing. I was just constantly never at home, just constantly doing things. But what I realized was that when I was throwing myself into these very niche, especially sport based activities or or even dance, I always I had this retrospectively, I had this sort of kind of film film's eye. Like I could see myself and I would imagine like how this would be shot. Like I mean, play, it sounds play, ridiculous. Like but kind of play out, out in a movie. movie. Yeah, I would totally I, I do, do that. get that. Do I don't you, know do if everyone does that? that because I've, I've you do it. <laughs> I've Brilliant. I'm not that. alone. This is good news. <laughs> I've played out enacted in my head this podcast, right? Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. So you know, kind of, you know, I'd like to do a podcast, and in your head, you're kind of sitting there. You've got the speed, and you're like, and you're kind of almost going through it, and then one day you find yourself there. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's manifestation. I don't know what it is, but it's kind, and I don't know if. If it's something that everyone done or if it's just a crazy thing, but it, you kind of have something that you're drawn to and you've got this kind of, I call it, feel it in your soul moments and you're going, at one stage it just feels a bit dreamy mm. and then it turns from dreamy into, oh, maybe I'll try it, you know, maybe but, I'll do it. Like, but, you don't know where it's going to go, but the beauty is sometimes you don't always need to know where mm. something goes. I, I think something that I am learning is having started my business six years ago, I was so kind of obsessed with knowing where it's going, you know, the five-year plan, like the budget, that how much we're going to make year one, year three, what we're going to... And it was like what I found with doing this podcast when it was in my mind, there was no, the end looks like this, or it was like actually, and that is a really liberating way to think about something because a lot of the times... For me, it was like, where is that leading to? What, what You're studying this. What are you going to do afterwards? There was always like a kind of, you're doing this for this. And it's like this kind of almost this transaction. Yeah. And sometimes you don't need to do something for that transaction. You're kind of like, I'd love to explore that. And I, and I actually think it's a really lovely thing to be able to give that gift to even like your children like sometimes I've got to kind of go I don't always need to say why are you going to study that because are you going to be this Mm. which is almost like my upbringing was always the result Result of what you're going to do um so this podcast was very much in that same frame of going oh I'm I'd love to do that and it was like a little dreamy thing in my head I'd love to do it one day and then I was like maybe I'll just like you know try it out and see what, what happens you know I'm actually loving doing this but it's almost that that thing of your journey it seems like you had that from quite a young age of like let me just try it out you know, it wasn't like you were going you know you might have thought playing yourself out as being rocky running up the stairs <laughs> but you didn't need to always think like I'm gonna have this result from it but actually I'm just gonna yeah, explore I mean, it I think this is it I think in the moment sometimes I think we can get so caught mm. up in this end game right yeah. it's always about and you forget the process right mm. and sometimes I, I mean I've felt that even in sports sometimes you you sort of start with something and by the time you're you, you're you're running or you're training because you want to do a race or because you want to be in a fight, uh, as in like for yeah. boxing, or, or you want to, you know, that you don't just train because you enjoy it. Well, or I never did. Yeah. I was always in the comp- competition realm. Mm. So that was like ingrained so deeply that I probably didn't see this for a very long time. But what acting gave me when I eventually did study it was the fact that in order to be able to actually, for me anyway, do the work, you can't end game. 
you can't play a scene knowing how the scene's going to pan out because in life, I don't know what you're going to say next. Mm. So it's about replicating a, an element of truth. And of course, you've got a script that you follow. But that's in the same way of sort of saying like the script here is that I talk and then you talk. And then at some point this will wrap up and I will leave. That That's the script. But what happens within that, you know, whether I throw my glass on the floor and you start shouting or whatever, yeah. you know, that, that could be a different dynamic. Don't, don't throw your glass no, away. I won't, I won't. But you know so what I'm saying? And that, that is no, like, that's the true. joy of it. And yeah. it means that a scene can go multiple ways. Like we can do this and it can go one way and we can do it another million ways and it can go a different way. And that's, that's the point. So to enjoy all those mm. possible ways of doing it is why I love w w my work because I think it gives you that, that space to be able to play. And I suppose that that really lends itself to when you say like being an artist, you're in creative mode. Mm. So, you know, whenever you're in creative mode, it's a it's a free flow, even though there is a North Star and you're going in a certain direction. It is a free flow. And that is where, you know, the, the magic, as they say, happens. Whereas if you can if you kind of feel like life's going to be so contrived that you can literally put every single thing in place sure enough, something will come and knock you completely for six and you go, I wasn't expecting that. And actually, if you kind of reverse back and go, I know that I want to go in this direction and things will come and it will ebb and flow. And I feel like now, as I'm getting older, I am able to be more like that. Whereas I think as it, when I was, you know, especially in my early 20s, I always wanted to know you know, and I felt like otherwise it's a failure. If it's not going to get this, then it's a failure. And having this kind of very ultimate um, success or failure, like mm. it's a black and white and you yeah. just realize it's not so black and white. No, absolutely not. I mean, I think these words have been coined. I mean, I have a real issue with linguistics generally. It's so hard to ever articulate what you actually want to say because I feel linguistics are so, um, how do you say, makes it small. You know, it, it makes everything very small. And if you, if we had a broader language, we could say so much more. And I think that success and failure are just two ends of the same extreme, mm, you know, yeah. and, and because failure can also be success and, you know, same the other way. And so I think it's so interesting that we strive for these sort of quite contrived ideas of what, again, what sort of the world wants from you or whoever you care about wants from you etc instead of going we don't know let's try and be comfortable and excited mm -hmm. about the fact that we don't know and let's just see and let's try and be honest about that you know that that's a place I think is far more exciting because who knows maybe maybe it's I don't want to swear but like maybe I was gonna say like shit scary yeah. you know like maybe it's just terrifying to not know but then sit with that how does that make you feel? Where do you want to go next? You know, that is an interesting exploration of you in your moment right now. Um, instead of saying, well, I, I shouldn't be scared or I must be strong or I must be, you know, because then we give, we sort of almost like manipulate what, what needs to happen. And I think with a bit of space, um, we discover things we didn't know existed. Yeah, I, so that's I super, totally agree. I love that. Just kind of sitting with that. And almost sometimes, like, I think just understanding that uncomfortability, you know, being being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, you know, we're kind of looking for comfort when actually, you know, when I think about even some of the things that I do, actually the bits where you feel really alive is that real kind of like that feeling of going, what am I doing? Oh, my gosh, I'm like free falling right now. And that is actually where... Um, I feel like you feel the most alive. Yeah. Um, so you finished your um, your stint at RADA yeah. and then you were like there in the big wide world. <laughs> I was there in the big wide world. <laughs> I'm an actor. And how did you, like, what, what was your, because you started a business. So oh, tell that, me yeah. how you went from acting to going... <laughs> I'm going to start this vegan, like, I mean, by the way, just explain your business because it, it totally took off. Oh, wow. Yeah, go well, on. gosh, I mean, how did we get from, from that to that? Who knows? Um, 
Well, I think the the baseline, I, I think I said this yeah. to you before, is that you should know about me as I have no stop button and I can't say <laughs> no. So, I mean, that's the problem because it just means you end up doing a lot and everything all at the same time, I, which is I, terrifying. I've got that button too. So, yeah, yeah. So um, I, I kind of, you know, I was, I was acting and it was going well and I've been really lucky that it's been quite steady. Um, and go, just quickly going back to sort of success and failure, like for me it was really recognizing the sort of the the, the spread yeah. f- for this world that is acting, right? You've got sort of like A-listers that make up a, like a kind of 1% or yeah. something. And then you have a whole bunch of other actors and, you know, you get them in sort of different brackets, some who work once in a while, some who work consistently, others who don't, unfortunately. None of it's really to do with how good anybody is. It's just to do with luck, pick of the draw, time and place. I mean, all these other things. Yeah. So for me, I quickly kind of decided to go, well, success for me is if I can pay my bills just acting, then, then I'm working, then I'm yeah. like, that's, that's enough for me. You know, I'm happy with that. And that's, that's my baseline. So I got there and that was, a, you know, fortunate. So I had some time off at a certain point, and this would probably be about four years ago now. Um, and my dad wanted to start his own business, but was a bit apprehensive because in London, when you start food businesses, there's so much red tape and Food business is a hard one, I they think. Are. They are very uh, hard. Health and safety, <laughs> all the rigorous uh, rules, oh. etc. So I said to him, listen, don't overthink it. You know, what do you want to make? And he's been making tofu all our lives. Uh, and uh, that's because we live in Japan. That's where he learned how to do it. And it all comes from the soybean. Um, and we wanted to sort of, well, he wanted to sort of start doing a tofu business in London because there were so few places that I think there's only a few like one I can think of that does fresh tofu. Um, so I said, look, I'll start as an Instagram page, uh, you know, set you up as a sole trader, off you go. And within about two weeks, it was just booming and everybody wanted it. And I was jumping on my bike again. I'd done Deliveroo a little bit before <laughs> as a cyclist. So I was back on my bikes, delivering, helping my dad grind beans in the kitchen, making soy milk, churning it into tofu, packaging. I mean, the whole oh, works. Oh, wow. The and whole I just works. went, went, went. And then, you know, by the end of about a month, we had about, I don't know, six fridges in one little kitchen, just trying to deal with everything. Uh, and it was at that point, I, I mean, even a bit sooner than that, I sort of quickly realized I was just like, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to step out of this now because I've sort of invested. And the thing it's with like not ju- being able to say no or to, to never sort of put the stop uh. brakes on um, is just that you go. And it was exciting and it was great. I was doing something with my dad. He loved it. I love food too. I've mm. always been into food. Um, and so then we started to expand our ideas. And I think the main idea for the business was to try and get a business that was vegan, but it was also sustainable because that was sort of something that we felt was lacking in the market. Loads of vegan options now, so big and so mm. grateful for that. But at the same time, having uh, I'm, I'm vegan. I've been mm. vegan all my life as my parents were vegan before. So it was amazing. But then a lot of the vegan cheeses and vegan things were wrapped in plastic. So we were like, well, this is a bit of a... Uh, there's a dichotomy here we're not sure like how we work this out let's try and find different ways so we created a range of products from the soybean um all deriving from the soybean from cheese this to is butter, so innovative i mean the work that goes into developing that then to think about the shelf life then oh, to think gosh. about the package i mean like, I, I'm, me, I've got PTSD. I'm in food <laughs> <laughs> i'm in food so i understand like the insane amount of work it sounds like you just made tofu but i'm like no, this is like you're making it in your kitchen, right? And then you're obviously now you're getting super busy and yeah, it's just you and you jump on that train that just starts going, mm. right? It, the tra- it's almost like you jump on the train and you're all of a sudden going, wow, this is going super fast. And I don't even know where the next stop is. Like it's, it's well, going. This is it. And I think the thing, it took quite a long time to learn when you think about it. My dad being, you know, much older than me mm. and me being my age, I, it was sort of, it took us quite a long time to figure out why we were running so fast, you know, but it was just because everything was yeah. going. So we just were going. I and it only it. really was in the last year that we decided to, we actually sat down and were like, do we even want to be doing this? Why are we doing this next project? Why, why are we doing this? Do we want to supply them? Why do we, you know, and... That was sort of the seed for us to start to decide that maybe this wasn't the road that was going to work out for us in the end. But um, the journey to that was fascinating and, you know, I mean, exciting and thrilling and terrifying and all of those things. And knackering. I mean, my God, you just don't sleep. (laughs) I (laughs) just don't sleep. I I was acting alongside. And you were still acting. And and I... 
I totally get that. And I kind of do think that there's a real important lesson in that, which is that when you do start something, every kind of, there, there needs to be times where you, because when you're going at a thousand miles per hour, you don't have time to reflect or stop or think about anything. Um, and for us, that didn't happen till COVID hit. So we, you know, we for grew, your business. yeah, for our yeah, business, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we grew and we we're at the startup and so many exciting things were happening. We we're opening one place after another and we were on the train and it was going, it was like the bullet train in Japan, right? Mm. The bullet train and all, all these words like high growth and, oh, you yeah. know, like we had like 50 staff and all these things and hitting like certain numbers that was like, wow, this is what a company is doing but I didn't have time to even stop and think. And when COVID actually happened, I think that's the first time I thought, is this the business that I want to create? Mm. Like, I, I didn't have time to think about that. And I actually realized, I was like, that is not the business that I want to create because it was like, how, how many is enough? A hundred? A mm. hundred sites, you know? Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah. that's just like, I mean, I just, I remember towards the end, just before COVID happened, I had this, I mean, we had so much going on. We were making this central kitchen, raised investment so much. And I'd never had this happen before, but I had a panic attack. And I remember being at home thinking, I can't breathe. And um, the guy the guy came around my house to fix my, I, my, uh, my Mac book, which was like freezing on me. And I was like, you know, at the point of like, I can't let this, I've got all my work on here. So he came around and I opened the door and I literally couldn't breathe. And he had to sit me down, get me water. And eventually I calmed down and I just thought, what is going on? I'm, mm. I, I, you know, everything was going so, so fast. And when COVID did happen, I think at that point I realized, you know, how much is enough? Like, I don't know how much is enough. And I've got all these massive numbers in my head. Like, we're going to hit this million and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And I was like, but what will that take from me? Yeah. And, you know, and sometimes, like, I think it's really important. Like, that, that there was another, you know, there was a feel it in your soul moment when I wanted to start the business. And then halfway through, there was another moment of going, this is not the way I want to grow. Not all growth mm. is the growth that you want. And you almost need to kind of, feel that out you've got to go explore yeah. it's okay to go explore but it's also okay to change your mind oh, yeah. and sometimes we don't we, we need that kind of permission to go you don't have to feel so wedded yeah. to an idea going no but I can't change that now um and I think it took something like a, a pandemic <laughs> to actually make me go oh I'm not I'm not married to this yeah you know I can change the direction I want to go and that's what you know we I still wanted to do Soul Delhi but I wanted to do it in a different way mm. a much more sustainable way um and that kind of took me down a different path but I think that's a really important lesson there of going hey we can start things and we sometimes need to stop and evaluate is this the way that we wanted it to go because very quickly that that you think you are created mm. can start dragging you Oh, and yeah. you're just going, hey, I'm I'm being taken by this business, not I'm leading this business. It's the other way around. So I think that's a real kind of like it's actually quite a brave thing to do to kind of go. I'm not sure this this is the way that we want to go. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that there's no and there's no no shame that? in that. Yeah, there is. A, I think and, that that there's a big element of this idea of shame, you know, and this again linked with the idea of failure. Yeah. And it's funny because I think I learned that a little bit sort of for myself. I mean, I'd learned it a few times. You know how sometimes yeah. you learn the lesson more than once? Yeah. They <laughs> say, if the lesson comes to you more than once, you still needed to learn that lesson. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and, course, I, and yeah. I feel that. There's some things that I've done a few times. I'm like, it's that lesson again. <laughs> Better get <laughs> no, it this yes. time. This is getting boring. <laughs> I, know, I know. And uh, on sort of like, probably I would hope the last time, maybe, who knows? Maybe I still want more to learn on that. But um, there was a, we'd finished the business in its physical form. Uh, and, you know, I, I was having this very strange reaction, considering that really it was my dad's uh, vision, but then it had become my baby. And I was doing everything from accounting, from Instagram, from making, delivering. To, I mean, it was literally Every everything. Every single thing, yeah. Uh, from being a person to fix a machine or build a machine. I mean, I, I don't know how to do that. You know, just making stuff up. So it really became my baby. And... I told, I sat down with my dad and I said, you know, you know, we've come to the end, like, it's not going to work out for various reasons. This has happened. Um, do you want to uproot your life and go to Yorkshire? Because we found a factory there. Yeah. We can, we can move there. 
And my dad like instantly was just like, no, I'm, I'm tired, I, I can't. He was like, but you can if you want to. And I was like, oh God. And then I, was, I, I mulled that over and I said, well, do I want to do this? I don't really want to do this on my own. You know, this is something we were doing together. Mm. If I do it on my own, it's become something completely different. I don't want that. So I made a decision. I said, no, I'm, I'm out too, we're cool. But I couldn't let it go. My dad booked a flight to India <laughs> probably about two days later, like totally chill. He was just like, <laughs> great, okay, well, one chapter closes, another one opens. And I was oh, I still like it. holding on, <laughs> being like, oh my God. And I was furious. I was so angry at him. I had a whole argument with him. And I was just like, how can you be so nonchalant about what I know, this? Like, like, could you, you just do, let it go? It feels like a relationship, right? That oh. you've invested so much in. It's like... <laughs> You know, it's almost like I, I put like my heart and soul into this. Like I, it's very hard for you Absolutely. to. Absolutely. I'm and I definitely did a silly like thing, that. But yeah. I did a silly thing of being, well, not silly, interesting thing of yeah. going, I'm going to let this go, but I'm not going to let it go entirely. And so I set myself the task of building an app. So I, I don't, I'm very, yeah. I don't even know how to turn my phone on. I mean, I'm really <laughs> bad. And I was like, I'm going to build an app because then I'm going to share these recipes on this app and it's all going to be brilliant. We're taking it into a different way and I'm going to do this all on my own. And I sat there and I read so many books and I had this guy helping me. I was learning how to code. Oh my God. It was God. a whole thing. And I did that for a month and a half. And I, I tell you, I was I was on a real like kind of weird yeah. sort of trip of just being unable to let go. To let go. And I think there was a morning I woke up and I realized I hadn't left my house because I was all on my laptop for about... I don't know, four days. And I was just in my pajamas. I barely had a shower and I was ready to code. And I was like, what are you doing? You don't code. You, that's, this is not what you do. And why have you not left that house? And you smell and you really need to sort your crap out. And, you know, it was very clear to me that I was just holding on too long. And at that moment, I said, actually, no. I'm not doing this app. I don't, I don't want to make an app. I'm not even interested in this. I don't want to do this. It's not making me happy. Let it go. And sometimes it's got to be a bit of a harsh yes. sort of like fight with yourself to get there. But the art of le letting when it go. <laughs> when it came, it was such a release. Yeah. You know, and I think it's difficult to know that it's going to feel that way because I think it's habit as well. I think sometimes you can work at such a pressure or at such a pace and mm. you forget. You forget that there's another pace because you, you're just so used to it. And when you're sort of, when you're able to find that again, it, it, it is like really kind of like eye-opening and sad almost that you sort of w were so removed from that other version of yourself. Having said that, I'm not a big believer in the sort of, I believe like you, you kind of have to do one thing or another, right? So, I mean, if you if you decide to do something, you've got to do it. You've got to be all in. You've got to be all in. You've got to be all in. And if you don't decide to do I something, do, then I you're do all agree. out. And you I do, do agree else. with you on that one. But, because, you know, there are. I think there are notions today in this day and age that, I mean, I don't know, maybe some people manage yeah. to do it. I, I have never managed to do it myself. Uh, it's, it's sort of like finding this balance thing, oh, which yeah. I think is great. <laughs> but I think there's an element of it that also slightly... Uh, I'm still battling with yeah. that idea a little bit of the, the balance to the point where, you know, you wake up and you do mindfulness every morning and then your whole, your whole world is okay. It's like, well, is it? Uh, does it? I mean, maybe it does. Uh, I don't know. Well, don't put this I, on Instagram. I, I'll be, be cancelled. <laughs> I do defy anyone, especially in those first, like, kind of formative or like startup years to work any other way yeah there's, there's just no other way I mean business is hard right if you just even think about the physicality of it right and then the kind of learning all the kind of whatever legal laws and and and, 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 and the courses and all the stuff that you need to do and on top of that you're managing finances and all the other thing I defy anyone to think that you're going to be balanced yeah. Uh, in that pursuit so I you know when people kind of say that you know I, I mean I do try and put a little bit of balance into my life now only because absolutely I was at burnout stage but it's because I've got a small team now but this is it because and you're able to because I was to able the point to where you're able to how do you say allocate responsibility yes and that is great but to get to that but it's point, taken me you six have years. to Jump in with that. two feet. Yeah, it has taken me six years to I, do that. I don't know anyone who's jumped not. with only one foot and has managed to get to that point. So I, I think it's... And I also think that you... I, I don't know if you feel like this, but you kind of feel like you're doing a disservice because whenever you want to do something, you know, if you're not putting your heart and soul into it, it's kind of like a kind of, 
you know, tick box. Hey, mm. we're going to do this and it, it requires this and then I'll switch off. It feels like you haven't, you know, poured yourself into it. And that when you do these things, I mean, you know, if I wasn't going to pour my heart and soul into what I do, maybe I would have just gone and got a job and stayed in my job mm. and had the work-life balance of whatever, whatever it was of what I was doing before but now I'm thinking back I didn't have any work-life balance there either so I actually think it's a personality trait well, of me going I, think I just go all in all, all in all. but I mean I mean I you know I am put a <laughs> disclaimer I'm not a psychologist and I don't know what I'm talking about this is just my personal experiences but I do think that there's something very much linked to sort of a bit like your initial question is like why why am I doing my job yeah like why do I do this why why and it's a really great question. I don't think it's answerable to a certain extent, but it is to others. And I think it's because we are an amalgamation of the moments that we have spent alive, you know, and you, you're not, you're constantly changing, you're constantly developing, but you are a product of all of those things. And I think that in some algorithmic way, you know, you could probably find a formula that explains exactly why you are the way you are. And that if you mm. were to do a job in Cafe Nero, probably I'm not allowed to use brand names or something, <laughs> but I don't know, a, a coffee shop, yeah. you know, you you would behave with the same sort of vigor and enthusiasm or, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, because it's a personality. It's because like part because of you're part makeup. of you, whatever makes you move forward or, or backward even, or whatever makes you move is something that is formed from the basis of either your genetics and your socialization. I mean, it's, it's ultimately, it's, it's that. Like, that is unchangeable. Mm, that's which, interesting. Well, well, we get into a whole conversation yes. about determinism <laughs> and choice and whether or not we have any choice. And in some regards, I mean, that is an argument for determinism in the sense that we don't. We don't have a choice. We are just a product of what we are. Mm. But there's I've a lovely... I've never thought about it like that. I, I, but that I is quite so. interesting because... But what I we do have is preference. I think what we have is preference and the preferences are the fact that you may have been form like there may be a formula that says you will always choose left because everything in your nature and nurture has made you always want to choose left. But on the day, you may still think that you are choosing left and that is real. That is real for you to have a preference to choose left. And so those choices must also be embraced with the same amount of enthusiasm as also embracing the fact that you have no choice. Do you know what I mean? Wow. I know, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We are, def- are we smoking something? No, or- oh, no I, I, I literally have gone into another <laughs> realm on this one. Because I'm sitting here thinking, is it sorry. me? I'm studying is, a no, degree no, in philosophy. No, I, I know I get carried away. I do, I no, do. Because I, I am thinking, is it is it my makeup? Because when I was saying, oh, you know, it's because I'm, it's my own business, right? But then I just thought back to my what I was doing before and I thought, actually, I work exactly the same. So maybe it's a personality trait. So you, you then started your business and then you decided to get back into acting. So, yeah, I mean, I was sort of, I had a month off. So by the time I set it up and it was all kicking off and booming, I was working again on another project and I was just trying to balance both. Um, and yeah, we just kind of just kept going like that, really. And we moved into one kitchen, then we moved into another kitchen, and it went and it went and it went. And then we were supplying the likes of Whole Foods and Planet Organic by the end. We had a factory. We had manufacturers that worked for us. We had, I mean, gosh, it was just, it was wow. had two shops. I mean, it was, it was all kicking off. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think at the height of really the juggling, I was sort of, doing the maths and going, okay, you know, we need to supply so-and-so and so with, you know, this many thousands of cheeses, but I was still making them. Uh, wow. My dad had all those orders for tofu to make, and we did have people working with yeah. us. But the thing with creating a very, very new recipe, as in something that's not been made before, is that there really isn't like, uh, it's so difficult to teach. You know, I remember we taught a guy who was wonderful, uh, and it took him about six months to just... Wow managed to create a batch that was similar to what we needed. And obviously I, I'd created it. So it was a lot, it was easier for me. So often, you know, to, to compensate, you know, again, that, that thing of sort of, you know, if I had to go back and also if we just had more money, quite yeah. frankly, you know, you would have taken a step back earlier and just gone before we launch anything, we're going to teach a set group of people and take the time that is required to teach these individuals to do it. Cause if it takes a year to teach this recipe, then 
that is investment, that is time. Mm. And, you know, we didn't know that at the time. We didn't, you, you can't know what you don't know. So we just cracked on. And so it just meant that I was jumping a lot. And at the height of it, I was, yeah, doing the maths, working out, I need to make thousands, deciding, okay, well, I won't sleep for, you know, 24 to 72 hours. I'll make all the thousands. Somebody else will come in and package them. I'll catch my train or my flight at five. I'll go and do some filming. I was just like, like totally mental. And then, you know, and and managed to hold it together, do the performance I wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Get my train or flight, whatever. Really back. intense. I bet you're so intense. Oh in my your god, I was like, wow, this house um, is so intense. But <laughs> the, the real moment where I was there was I remember coming back and then being told, oh my god, we've only got like a couple of hundred left, and we've got the order in. That's nine hundred for this person, nine hundred for this person. And I was, I just gotten back. I still had my luggage. And I arrived at the shop and the the, the 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 kind of kitchen, and I was just like. Right, okay. And I just started making the cheese and just like crying. I was just standing there just crying. I was churning cheese going, I don't know why I'm crying. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Just absolutely mental. And then, yeah, you know, you'd have a big old cry. You'd go to the walk-in fridge, cool your temperature down. And then you'd come back out and just stand be like, right, start again. Yeah. Stand in the walk-in fridge. That I've done is that. a remedy. I've done that. I, I found myself crying quite a few times especially like um it was this one time I'll never forget we had to uh, cook um so we were cooking all the food and we'd like grown to like four sites at that time and we were still cooking everything right so it was like 12 one o'clock in the morning there's like now we've finished cooking but there's now all the pots pans and everything to wash and everything and I was just I just looked at it all the kitchen looked like something had exploded and I just sat on the floor in the corner and I just started bawling my eyes out I could not stop and my mum was like literally like you call this hard pull yourself together like she literally I was like mum I don't think I can do it it's just too much because I knew it wasn't that I was like it was one o'clock and I had so much washing it was like I'm gonna be up at five the bread pan man's coming at five and I was just like I just I need a bread, and I just literally was just in the throes of it. So I totally get that crying, but I've got to say, like, kudos to my mum, who literally was just like, come on, Ange, go, like, get yourself up. Like, no one thought that washing's not going to do itself, but I just got back up. And it's almost like I had to be robotic about it oh, because yeah. if I wasn't, I, mean, I was having a, men- like, a complete emotional this is, breakdown. I, I think when we were talking, you know, I said it was so interesting. I hadn't, again, the habit of it sort of took over. And I was fine when I was doing, it was like there were two hats. And when I was doing my acting work or auditioning or doing things like that, I, I felt like I was more in a sort of balance, like a balanced yeah. place. So I wasn't overreacting. I was, I was a kind of who I usually am. Yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah. And the second it would come to the other hat again, I would just become this absolute brute, <laughs> you know, and I just would just be so... <sighs> Take no yeah. shit from anyone and just be there with the whip. I know. And, you know, I became I, I, a really sort of fierce yeah. version of myself. Uh, and, you know, some people go, oh, great. You know, that was great. But for me, I found it actually very strange, you know. Mm. Also, because you talk about working with your mum. When I worked yeah. with my dad, you know, that that's also a relationship. Yeah. And, you know, when, when you're shouting at your dad saying you're not working fast enough hurry up I mean that is wrong on so many levels you know I, I felt and then you feel guilty and then you feel regret and then you but then in your back of your mind you go well you know you've got to otherwise you can't mm. meet the order and you know and he isn't working fast enough so you are right you know and all of that weird you know that, it is crazy actually I've got it's to horrible say that that sometimes. whole thing of like also our team was growing right mm. so our, our biggest we had like yeah, I think nearly 50 people and I realized, I mean, I'm, I've always been a people person and I started to feel like, on, I feel even bad saying it, like I didn't know if I was that much of a people person anymore. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you know, because you're so, you're so striving to get there. You know, it's such, it takes so much out of you that what comes out sometimes is not the best of you, you know, because you're frazzled, you're tired, you're all these things and it needs to get done and you need to deliver every single time. So I I totally get that how that also has a kind of a personal element of this, you know, alter ego that comes out and it's not something that you want to come out. 
But if it doesn't, you don't know how it's going to get done. Yeah, it's it's. But this is it. It's because the pressure makes you sort of go on like the. It's like a pressure cooker. The, well, you, yeah, <laughs> it makes you. It forces you to act in the way that you know has worked in the past. Mm. It doesn't leave room for options, and I think that that's. I mean, once I think we, when we were building our second shop, uh, I wrote my partner in to come and help, and uh, you know. This is voluntary. This is like on a Sunday, you know, Sunday <laughs> afternoon, you know. The people that have to they, be they, they're to working. You are so, so yeah, so like so they're sorry. working a full time job. They don't need this stress. Yeah. <laughs> they're doing it for free. And, you know, the guy comes and he's there. And I'm like, so no, what you need to do is this, 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 and the other. And, and he's going to me, okay, but I feel like this might not be so efficient. Maybe if I do. And I was just like, no. Sorry, who's asking you for your opinion? No, you know, you do exactly as I say. And, you know, we got into this whole thing. And I remember just being like, no, you're wasting time. And it was horrible. It was all just the worst versions. And, and what's so fascinating is on any other given day or in any other moment, I would 100% align in theory with the idea that, you know, good leadership yeah. requires listening to the people that you work with, oh. seeing the strengths and weaknesses, adapting to this stuff. I mean, all of that, I am like pro. But, you know, put me in, put me in a situation where I feel a little bit squashed and do yeah. that for four years without any sleep. And I mean, yeah, yeah. no, you get, you get a, yeah, sleep a very does have bad like version crazy, of humanity. It, Yes. But this is where I also think what's so interesting about moving forward and sort of like what's so evident about what you've managed to create is the fact that this curiosity of like where you're going to go, this thing that I keep talking about, I think is also based in like kind of forgiving, right? Like you've got to let it go. Yeah. And that's forgiving I, yourself. Yourself. Well. You've got My to let goodness, yourself yeah. off the hook once in a while. And if you don't let yourself off the hook once in a while and you hold on to things too long, then this is... I, I've always thought to myself, like, nobody's going to come and save you. Like, I mean, I, and no. I don't know whether, you know, maybe I, I mean, I'm also dealing with my own yeah. traumas. So, yeah. you know, I've got still a whole bunch to learn. Yeah. But it's like, I always felt that, like, you, nobody's going to come on a lovely white horse and save me. The only person who can save me is me. And at the end of the day, you're on your own. Mm. Even with people, you are on your own internally. So if you want to do something, if you want to get something done, if you want to help yourself, if you want to move forward from something, you've got to do it. And yeah. th there's a real thing with taking ownership of where you're at, I think, and then deciding that you will change yeah. what you want. I mean, the fact that you might not be able to do that smoothly or that you'll get it wrong a whole bunch of times is separate. But wanting to, that has to come from you. And I think that often... That's the first step that I think people often don't know is even there. That they don't know that that's the first step. They just go, whoa, 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 what's going on? And it 100% comes from, I think, you deciding something I, needs think, to change. Yeah, and I do think that that whole thing of just being a bit kinder to yourself, because mm. like there is nobody who's harder on yourself than yourself. It's like, no one can give me a hard time. Because no. <laughs> what I give myself is like 10 times more. Oh, so, yeah. And I think, and when you've got all these like external pressures which are coming from you know you're you've got 10 different hats that you're that you're wearing when you're in that startup phase mm. that what's going to come out in the in the wash is not going to be the best version of you you know you don't you'd love to have this kind of like you're creating this training program and doing all this stuff but actually you the work's coming in faster than you're able to put it out so you're just like you're almost a product of Absolutely. what you're trying to do. So I think, yeah, I think anyone who's in, who's definitely in those first few years, that just giving yourself, just kind of taking yourself off the hook. But I mean, like, also with, you know, we're sort of linking this with sort of startup and business, but again, sort of like with the, what I do in terms of acting, I mean, the amount that, you know, you can spend a whole day shooting and finish a scene or something and still have a smile on your face and be like, thanks so much. And then you spend the entire time in your head going, that was awful, that was awful, that was awful, that was awful. And what you realize is that by, by doing that, you don't help yourself come back in the next day. You make it worse. Yeah. I mean, it sounds so obvious, but I know. sometimes you just do it you because just that's just what happens. <laughs> and you just go, well, actually, you have to take control of that because if you don't, what, the ultimate aim of what you want to do with this job or what I want to do with this job is that if you take it like more like a marathon is yeah. that yeah okay yeah maybe I did a scene and it wasn't the best acting in the world maybe I wasn't that truthful maybe I wasn't in the moment uh, the moment okay so learn 
try try again try again that, that that's all it is you know and i think that the the great thing about sort of the sort of entrepreneur mm. sort of business element that sort of i i started and my acting work is that again you know the perspective going back to like sort of like what i try to think in terms of big perspective is i'm not saving any lives not really you know i mean if i get my lines wrong it's okay yeah. like you know and it's we get this pressure put on us that like absolutely not you're not professional yeah. You're, you're bad. And actually, this. it's a lot of the time it's coming. It is coming from yourself. I do recognize that. Do I think that everyone else is putting a lot of pressure on me? I'm like, it's actually coming from from myself. And something that I learned once, <laughs> which was, um, I was never that good at catching a ball, <laughs> right? I literally used to flinch, right? And I went like that for ages. And someone once said to me, I was like, this is when I was a bit older, let's say like late teens. They were like, don't worry about not catching the ball. Just, just, just keep trying to catch or like just hit the ball. Hit the net. Your job is to just keep hitting the ball. Not to go, oh, I dropped that one. I did this. Just keep hitting the ball. And literally, I started playing, you know, started playing badminton, tennis. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, so I wasn't actually bad at at hitting the ball no. I was actually so in my head that mm. I can't I can't I'll, I'm gonna miss that I was missing because of the, the fear that I'd I'd kind of built up and I think that is so kind of even in life you can use that analogy that actually business whatever it is your job is turn up do it just do it keep hitting that ball keep hitting that ball don't worry it dropped that, that one went over your head that one hit you on the head just keep trying to hit the ball yeah and that is something that I have actually just taken through with me of going I don't have to if you keep if you start worrying about the one that you dropped it's going to affect every other thing that comes towards you. And trying to, you know, when I'm now thinking of the last few years of trying to put a bit more of maybe a morning routine, maybe, you know, doing some something that has some mindfulness in it, the reason that I'm purposefully putting those things in mm. is because otherwise, very quickly, you can whip yourself into such a frenzy. Mm. And you almost need those moments of solitude, those moments of switching off, you might find it difficult, but you kind of, when you switch off for a bit, even if it's for a couple of minutes, it's like a little reset button. Well, this is it. I think that there's there's tools, right? And you yeah. kind of like have to sort of experiment until you find the things that kind of work for you. But yeah. you've just got to try and find those things that kind of ground you a bit more and make you last a bit longer, Yeah, if that makes sense. Like, like you said, like thinking about something like a marathon as opposed to the a sprint, sprint yeah. uh, you know, and the finish line. Whereas actually if, where, where what I'm starting to feel now is that actually this is the bit that I'm enjoying right well it's you know, so when I was you, you when can I, enjoy yeah. the process whereas before I was like the process is hard you don't enjoy the process the process is the grind you know it's always like the words that I'd use the graph the mm. so I was like I felt like I was like doing the grind every day yeah and it's like when I took myself out of that mindset and I was like Hey, this this is the fun part. Yeah, you know. Yes, it took me a while well, to get there. Well, also, like just like reframing, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I think so with the audition process, for instance. And this isn't to say that I I, I still care far too much. Yeah. And I should probably <laughs> care less. But um, you know, <laughs> when I work in progress. Well, yeah, work <laughs> in progress. But I mean, you know, the first kind of auditions I did when I came out of drama school, you know, I thought it had to be the best thing ever, and I had to be the best whatever that means, yeah. uh, against who, myself yeah. or others, who knows, you know. And now it's so interesting, quite a few years later, that I, I've reframed that. And for me, I go, well, there's, there's no need to do it now. Otherwise, what are you going to do with the rest of your time? So now I go, no, no, I want to be the best at this, what it is that I do yeah. for myself uh, when I'm 75. I like that. At which, case, at, at which point I go, well, I've got all the time in the world. So, okay, today I'm having a day off. <laughs> You know, like today I'm being lazy because it's a Saturday or a Sunday or, you know, yeah. in the sense that the reframing of the goal has changed how I feel about the stress that I put on myself to mm. do it. And that's been a really, really like, again, very obvious, very simple thing, but it changes everything. It's very liberating. And it, and it definitely is a mindset thing. Uh, because I don't know why you kind of feel like this stopwatch scenario where mm. the, the time is ticking. Got to get this done. And when you step out of that, you realize, you know, I mean, this is something that I've always wanted to do, like starting mm. my business, doing all this stuff. So I'm like, I think I can enjoy the process now. Yeah. And and I think it takes it takes a little bit of kind of going, 
your own little demons of getting through those and acknowledging and giving yourself kind of permission to kind of have days where you haven't had a great day or, mm. you know, you know, I shouted and that wasn't so great mm. and apologizing for it later. I'm really sorry, guys. But I actually realized that, that everyone is going through that. And actually, you know, one thing that I have loved about this whole journey that we have is working with my brothers and the kind of camaraderie that comes from that. And now we look back at those moments of me like on the floor in floods <laughs> of tears and it's hilarious. Oh, it's like, yeah. it's it's so, so funny. So moving on from kind of, I'm <laughs> lost in this kind of... Uh, Sorry, we're me- in a healing <laughs> I know. Um, so you said, um, so yeah, so you then went back into um, into your acting roles. Uh, and yes. and ha- has that, do you feel like you've returned home with acting? Is that kind of, do you feel like this is your space or are you kind of feeling quite fluid of like, let's see where this goes? Or do you feel like, actually, I feel like, or do you think there's like, I might start that up again a bit, a bit later. I've put it on the shelf. Oh, with the business, um, yeah. you mean? Or um, do you think that actually... You know, I feel like the most at home... I don't think I... Yeah, I mean, I think I've always... I don't know, again, if I might have told you this already, but I I feel like acting, it's not really... The way I view it today is not... It's not what I do. It's a sort of way of life. So whether I work or I don't work, I'm... I think I will always be an actor. The way I perceive the world and use the tools that I've built over time to make sense of the world and try and understand it better or whatever these things are that's just the way I do it now Mm. so I'll I'll always be an actor even if I don't work I think if you frame the idea of being an actor like the way I do so no I would strive to continue to work and make this what I do for a living I think I don't put the pressure on it so much because I know more about the industry Mm. and I know more about the fact that it has to align now with who I am and where I sit in my life. Like, I don't, if I'm happy doing what I'm doing, I will continue. But I also know that, you know, I I won't. And perhaps things like running a business and stuff have shown me that if it goes on for too long where I'm not enjoying what I'm doing, then I won't. And I'm open to, to doing other things. I mean, I'm sort of fortunate. I started working at the age of 14. So, I mean... I've done everything, really, in terms of jobs taught. I've worked in kitchens, I've done Deliveroo, (laughs) I've done most things. So, I mean, I'm not worried about having a job. Mm. Having a job, I could probably have a job. Yeah. So, having a vocation and having something that not only works as a job, but also fulfills my ultimate uh, goal in life which is to find a sort of contentment in me mm. um, that I get from acting so yeah no I would never want to let that go I love that um, Laura it's been amazing it's talking been to so you good. We've been I, don't, I know <laughs> I, I literally have gone down so many little rabbit holes and then found myself just deep in thought and thinking oh actually I'm, oh, we're doing a podcast here because I'm now, now reflecting on my own choices and how did I get there why did I do that so that was very for me also very insightful thank you so much as for me thank um, you we have a closing tradition Ooh. I say that and this is like the third podcast I'm doing but I like it it's a tradition now uh which is um it's really the gift of hindsight and experience so in kind of like if you were to give your younger self, um, like the gift of hindsight or, ex- or experience, what advice would you give? So if you were trying to tell your se- younger self anything, what would that thing be? Mm, man, that is such <laughs> a good one. It's so hard. Um, I think for me, it would probably we probably have to do something with impatience. But I feel like telling myself to not be impatient is a little bit too harsh. So I think it would be something like go easy with the fact that you are an impatient person, but no, it won't always be that way or something. It would be something around patience. Okay. Um, and, I think- and that with time, I will learn it. Slowly, you will learn patience. 
you don't have to force it and also you just don't want a patient person so chill out <laughs> you know like that something like that that's uh, a convoluted be, be, kind uh, to, be kind to yourself I suppose that that thing that came up earlier on on our conversation of just just be kind to yourself like just let it let, be okay with the fact that hey you know yeah. I didn't have it all or I needed to change direction or whatever mm. and sometimes giving you you know when you said that bit of God, I was but holding, I mean you say this I was holding on to that business and yeah. you know when you have to like fight yourself to go and then you relax and you go it's okay it's okay it's yeah. all right so I mean we sh- I should be giving myself that advice today then not to the younger self but to to me today I will I'll take that on board something for food of thought food for thought for the rest of the week how exciting Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Alora. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been so good. I loved it. I loved it. What a wonderful conversation.